Uh, thanks, Neme, uh, Janis, uh, Elaine, uh, and uh, all the others that uh, are here to uh, you know, make, that make this uh, event possible. Uh, I'm going to give you an introduction on um, uh, MoneyLab, uh, the project, the network, uh, its uh, agenda, and yes, we are celebrating uh, 10 years uh, of uh, MoneyLab. So, um, but for me, uh, the questions that MoneyLab are raising, of course, go back, uh, you know, uh, much longer. In fact, um, I ran across the issue, let's say, of, uh, of internet and payment systems uh, already uh, in 92 when uh, I made an interview with David Charm. Now, uh, I was in uh, some uh, French circles who happened to work with, uh, uh, for this guy. Uh, he was a Vietnam uh, uh, you know, refugee uh, from uh, California that arrived in Amsterdam, like many others, in the 70s. Uh, and um, uh, he developed um, you know, uh, his, um, his own theory of uh, cryptography. Uh, and he worked at the, the Center for Mathematics and uh, Computation, CVE, uh, where uh, also a lot of the, you know, um, let's say foundations were laid for the European uh, uh, Internet, uh, which you can still see uh, when you visit there because there are huge uh, data centers now. There's the, uh, uh, you know, the European uh, inter uh, Internet Exchange there. So, you know, so. Anyway, uh, so in 92, I made um, uh, an interview with him about payments and uh, the internet. Um, uh, and uh, so he, I was introduced uh, to, to him and then I followed him, of course, until uh, yeah, the bankruptcy uh, of this uh, 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 firm, which was uh, very unfortunate. Um, but it happened in a very turbulent uh, time in 98, which uh, was, of course, the time when uh, venture capital had moved into the, the internet, uh, we had the whole uh, IPO of Netscape and uh, two uh, things that really defined the internet uh, from then on re became dominant. One is the, the venture capital mo model of, uh, of, uh, of financing uh, a cre and creating uh, monopolies. Right? So the, the explicit aim of, of all these uh, venture capital uh, investments were to create monopolies. Not a market, no, the markets would be in included inside these monopolies. This was very clear from the very, very start, right? A lot of money you put in so that companies would grow very fast and would create very early on a monopoly. So this is the, these were the people behind monopoly capitalism, let's say old school. Um, and then, uh, so that was the, 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 the real money that flowed in from Wall Street, from, uh, in fact, from investors, um, and not so much from Wall Street. Um, and uh, in the, in the effect was that, uh, you know, we started to see uh, back already in 99 uh, that, that, that this was going to be uh, the, the business model, that there was money flowing from inside and that uh, the users, uh, you know, uh, were somehow uh, using all these uh, products uh, for free. And so th we uh, developed uh, th this uh, free for what uh, uh, campaign, which we did um, uh, out of the Kiasma uh, Art Museum in, uh, in Helsinki, uh, to first uh, theorize, you know, what this uh, strange economy was all about. And this uh, then culminated in the Telepomania.com uh, 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 event, uh, which um, uh, happened um, uh, in June 2000. Uh, this was, in fact, uh, two months uh, before the dot-com uh, crash, right? So we started to theorize uh, and th this whole idea of tulipomania was already very present. The idea that this was an artificial uh, kind of uh, bubble that this was going to burst was uh, already uh, uh, quite uh, apparent um, back in uh, 99, early uh, 2000. Okay. 
I want to commemorate here uh, the work of Corina Patelis from uh, Athens um, she, because uh, she is one of the first that I knew at the time who wrote a PhD thesis um, in the late 90s about the political economy of the internet. So, th and this is, by the way, a, a, a PhD thesis that you can still uh, download for free, so it's available uh, online. And for those interested, it's really, really interesting to see how in the late 90s, um, uh, people in our circles of net time and net art, etc., how we thought uh, of the political economy uh, of, uh, of the internet uh, back, uh, back in, in the time, let's say around 25, 25 years ago. Yeah? Uh, she wrote this thesis, as you can see, uh, at Goldsmith, um, and she was uh, one of a very active member uh, of NetTime, and she was, in fact, the one that, uh, you know, um, together with me, started the Unlike Us network, which was um, founded uh, here in Limassol back uh, in November 2011. So that's, in fact, 12 years uh, ago. Now, uh, there's something strange. Often uh, we see that in, uh, in the Bitcoin blockchain um, uh, rhetorics and histories, uh, there is a, a kind of a silent decade, and this is the, uh, and in which not much was supposed to happen. But of course, in 2007, uh, 2008, uh, you know, the, there was the, the big uh, financial crisis, right? And so, um, and, and that is kind of uh, officially seen as a, as a kind of, uh, you know, breaking point, as a really important uh, moment. But the, the early years, which are in fact the years in which, uh, you know, the Web 2.0 uh, ideology uh, and set up was uh, uh, consolidated uh, are the years, of course, of Google, Facebook, Twitter, and all the rest, right? They, they were founded in that period and established themselves. So, so the, the platform capitalism as we know it right now was established exactly in that period, right? It's also the, the period, of course, when Amazon started to grow, etc., etc., right? So it, 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 that period. However, um, uh, you know, uh, back in uh, 2008, something happened, and then, of course, after that, uh, we got uh, in 2011, we got uh, the Arab Spring, uh, uh, we got uh, Occupy Wall Street, right? And this is kind of a, an, a, the, a critique of uh, global finance. Uh, but it and it ha was uh, or, or, uh, activated and uh, coordinated through the social networks, but uh, you know, there was no uh, real thinking yet uh, inside Occupy Wall Street uh, about you know, what we are discussing uh, here uh, today. Uh, so it's, it's quite an interesting um, um, critique because we are here in, in the kind of the crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin, uh, we, we're not really talking anymore we're not so preoccupied with Wall Street anymore, right? It's almost a classic uh, global finance. Yeah, who cares about them? In fact, uh, people do care <laughs> and did care <laughs> at, the, at the time, right? And so, uh, yeah, and so this kind of culminated uh, then uh, in... Um, in the Money Lab uh, first event, right? So we started in late uh, 2013, and here you see the agenda uh, of the of the first um, uh, event, which was, by the way, opened by Saskia Sassen, which is interesting because it's an interesting kind of transitional figure because she is very much associated with, uh, on the one hand, with uh, networks and, uh, and 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 with global finance, right? Anyway, uh, other speakers, you know, were Franco Berardi and so on and so on and so on. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. But here you can see kind of a, the, the diversity uh, of, um, uh, of, the, of the agenda. And I think this is what defines uh, Money Lab. We're not, uh, we're not focused on, on, on crypto, blockchain, or we're focused on uh, 
on the uh, expanding notion of money where we want to discuss uh, new definitions uh, of money and particular with a particular focus uh, on um, one question and you know NEME is an arts organization and I think that's why we are here uh, you know we're not uh, uh, in uh, in the, the city in London huh? Exactly not, <laughs> because we, uh, we are interested in uh, what we call a revenue models for the arts. How can artists in the 21st century make a living? So there's the, the question of money and money definition in general, and then the focus or the case or something like that, or the context for us is this question of, yeah, how, how are artists supposed to make money? Uh, if they're produ producing mostly digital works, uh, if, if they are uh, exposed to incredible forms of uh, precarity, uh, if um, uh, the funding models uh, that uh, the Ministry of Culture, etc., uh, once provided have, uh, uh, have failed, and uh, like in the Netherlands, uh, you know, this is the period uh, of dra dramatic uh, budget cuts, uh, half of the uh, funding in culture and the arts disappeared in the Netherlands in, in precisely in that period, right? So, uh, so and here you see um, kind of um, uh, an early definition of uh, what we thought Money Lab was uh, about. Uh, again, I'll quickly go through some of them uh, here. Uh, it, it, it's interesting here also to note that uh, Big Pocket is watching you. So we, we had an early um, interest in uh, surveillance uh, techniques uh, uh, of the of the state and the, the big platform tax. Uh, you know how you are spending your money. Hmm? Whether it's Bitcoin doesn't really matter. Wh whatever <laughs> whatever uh, currency. So, uh, and of course, uh, you know, the Brad Scott's uh, agenda was also that there very much early on, right? And, and uh, it was noted that uh, cash uh, was uh, uh, under attack and that uh, this was going to play out differently, uh, you know, in, in, different, uh, in different countries. Um, yeah, so, um, and yeah, here you can see with the monopoly of the central banks crumpling, the very definition of money is up for grabs. And this is kind of where, uh, where we are uh, still, uh, and I would say that this is, um, um, so, so this is kind of where um, uh, 10 years later uh, we, are, we still are uh, in terms of uh, uh, the the, the focus uh, and uh, it's important to note because uh, you know it, that makes us maybe a little bit different from uh, the crypto uh, critics and the crypto advocates um, uh, we would like to uh, have a, a somewhat broader uh, so, so broader look not only on uh, let's say the set what the central banks are doing with the digital uh, euro etc uh, but also, um, you know, uh, for instance, how artists are making uh, a living. For instance, uh, uh, is uh, crowdfunding still, uh, you know, uh, a, a viable option? Uh, yes or no? Uh, how many, uh, you, you know, um, um, uh, ether did you uh, in the end make of uh, the whole uh, NFT craze and so on, right? Okay, so um, here's, uh, there's different um, uh, versions of Money Lab. We also focused here very specifically already in 18 on the, on the, on the criminal side. Um, and this is kind of where also we maybe uh, differ from the, 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 the crypto uh, advocates. Uh, we're very much focused on what we call, you know, the criminal energy that is uh, out there. Um, to put it in very neutral terms. Um, and um, um, uh, here are two of the publications. You can still download them. One is from 16 and the other one, uh, I, I believe, from 18. And there's uh, state machines as well with some related uh, materials. And then, uh, yeah, there is, uh, there is this one. Uh, and I, I want to uh, emphasize number seven a little bit because it was the last one. 
uh, uh, in real life. So uh, this uh, number 13 is the first one again when we uh, gather uh, in, in real space. So this was uh, quite, uh, yeah, so this was in uh, late, just three months before COVID, right? Um, and this was uh, primarily also of one that was focusing on the feminist uh, critique uh, of money and finance and the bloke chain, as, uh, as it is called uh, here, right? So, um, yeah, so w w in between we did stuff, uh, you know, uh, speci specific research ourselves uh, about uh, crowdfunding. Uh, also, of course, uh, the, um, the use uh, of um, uh, mobile phones uh, and payment systems uh, like MPES um, uh, in, in, in Africa uh, remained a, a focus. But then, of course, uh, yeah, soon uh, we kind of s started to get sucked into, uh, you know, the boom and bust um, 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 dramas uh, of, of, of Bitcoin. And, um, yeah, I mean, we can say a lot uh, about this. Um, and, but, but uh, yeah, the, 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 it's still going on, as, uh, as you know. So this uh, ideology uh, has uh, kind of um, uh, continued up to uh, today. Uh, it, it reached a, a peak uh, in, um, I believe, August uh, 2021, and or earlier, a bit earlier, and then uh, it, uh, it it kind of uh, it, it it crashed, right? And now, and now it, it st was stable uh, for a really long time. Yeah, here are two of, of the books that I find quite, uh, you know, uh, interesting. And uh, um, uh, the one, the one uh, book, uh, the, the one from Nathio Popper is really about the first years of, uh, of Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, it's focusing on um, incidents and stuff like uh, Mount Gox and, uh, uh, and other uh, things. And then uh, the Finn Brunton's book is a bit more on the hippie side, on the, on the Californian uh, side, let's, uh, let's say. Uh, yeah, there are um, uh, Silk Road, of course, there's a whole book just about that uh, whole episode, uh, an early, uh, early um, uh, let's say, uh, dark uh, web uh, market. Uh, run on uh, on uh, on Bitcoin, uh, but then there's of of course also the the rise of uh, Vitalik Buterin, uh, who, uh, if I'm right, I, I think I have identified him uh, in, back in March uh, 2014 attended the first Money Lab, and so uh, so he uh, uh, was already uh, working on on stuff like uh, this, and here you see. Uh, you know, his book um, uh, about it. Um, yeah, there are a lot of artists uh, that, uh, you know, uh, throughout the years uh, have uh, um, uh, participated in Money Lab, showed work. Uh, I'm thinking particularly here of uh, Femke Herregraven, but also Paolo Sirio, who have done uh, very similar uh, uh, works. Um, on um, uh, you know fraudulent uh, schemes uh, in the in the Caribbean, uh, yeah, and that uh, somehow continues up to uh, today because the the Bitcoin me mecca, the crypto mecca uh, today is uh, happens to be El Salvador. So, yeah, so th this has a whole uh, uh, um, 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 tradition. Uh, here you see Simon Denny's uh, um, uh, early work in one of the um, Berlin, Berlin Biennales. I'm not really sure which edition this is, but maybe something like 2016, maybe. Huh? 16, huh? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and he, uh, you know, has uh, produced uh, many works uh, uh, about about uh, the whole uh, crypto saga. Uh, I want to mention here, uh, because they're not uh, with us here uh, today, 
But uh, yeah, there is this uh, uh, really uh, beautiful uh, experiment uh, about uh, the Robin Hood minor asset management. I want to bring that into <laughs> uh, memory because uh, yeah, there was an, an infamous um, uh, train ride, uh, the Trans-Siberia Express, with lots of uh, artists and activists and thinkers. Uh, I think they, they went from uh, Beijing to Moscow and then further. Uh, and yeah, this is one of the um, projects that came out of it. And this was then turned into the Economic Space Agency, right? And um, they've been contributing to uh, the Money Lab uh, from very early on. Uh, they're still uh, active. And um, uh, yeah, I consider them a, a really, uh, you know, interesting um, kind of post-capitalist uh, attempt to uh, incorporate some of the elements uh, of the blockchain uh, and crypto story, but by far not all of them, right? They're uh, very, very uh, decisively uh, uh, against uh, the, the, uh, the right-wing libertarian uh, you know, majority. Uh, and their ideologies. And Money Lab increasingly over time kind of became a place where this kind of critique of, uh, of the right wing libertarian uh, majority was coming together and was being played out. Last but not least, also, of course, uh, in the work of Brad Scott, who is probably the, the poster child, or how do you call that? <laughs> uh, the most uh, visible, uh, probably, uh, you know, member of, uh, of, the, of, of, of the Money Lab uh, network. Here you see his early book, and then, of course, uh, the one that uh, came out in the late COVID period. He's, uh, his um, uh, analysis of, uh, of the, yeah, the crisis of, uh, of cash, cash money. And I will always show this one because this is kind of, Sweden is the most uh, uh, you know, visible. Um, uh, and in fact, the <laughs> it's gone down, but it's, it's even gone down further, right? So, uh, so this is really, uh, but also don't forget, uh, there's also demonetization happening in, in countries like, uh, like India. Remember this, uh, this case um, when I believe the, um, uh, the 500 uh, rupee um, uh, bill uh, was overnight, was uh, uh, claimed worthless uh, because the, the Indian mafia had, had too much uh, uh, money uh, according um, to Modi. And uh, yeah, so he uh, kind of... Uh, in, in, in one overnight strike, um, you know, took out all the 500 uh, uh, rupee bills. Um, yeah, so here uh, you see some of the other, um, uh, well, we'll have the, the blockchain radicals, who knows uh, if um, Joshua will show up uh, here, but um, yeah, so there are, um, uh, a lot of uh, things that are happening, and I, I'm now slowly uh, moving to, um, you know, the agenda, let's say, uh, of today. Uh, in the COVID period, we've had a lot of um, uh, money labs that were kind of hybrid, but uh, online. Uh, and, um, yeah, since, um, since about two years, we haven't had uh, a meeting. But uh, the network is uh, still, uh, still alive and there's uh, a lot of uh, issues uh, out there. So there's the central banking digital currency uh, topic that uh, hopefully uh, Brett Scott uh, will uh, talk about. Uh, so that, that's, uh, this is the, what you know here maybe amongst you known as a digital euro. Uh, but there's also the work of Stefan uh, Heidenreich, who is uh, here with us um, uh, today, uh, with an even, I would say, even more radical theory uh, to get rid uh, of money altogether, right? And so this is also what, um, uh, what needs to be uh, uh, discussed in, in my uh, understanding, right? There's, a, there's also a speculative uh, part of, of, of Money Lab uh, going even beyond, let's say, the, the quite restrictive 
financial imaginary of crypto uh, and blockchain advocates. Um, uh, and I think we, we should uh, really also uh, work uh, on that. Um, yeah, maybe you, do, you follow this or, or not, but uh, yeah, uh, the, the money has really left uh, the building. Uh, maybe you have uh, noticed it uh, also. Uh, last year, of course, uh, most of the investments were uh, in AI. And uh, three months ago, uh, it was uh, announced that even in AI, now the major money uh, in, uh, investments have gone, gone down uh, dramatically. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, there are these uh, the, the waves, but um, yeah, crypto startups are really, uh, uh, we believe, a thing of the past. So uh, we've really, uh, you know, uh, seen a dramatic, dramatic drop. Um, and so uh, this will, again, maybe uh, create an interesting new uh, situation where, uh, you know, the investors uh, have gone have left, uh, <laughs> have left the sinking ship, and uh, you know what are we going to do? Uh, what do we? And I hope that uh, um, in the coming two days we will uh, come up with a, you know a, a preliminary answer. You know what is our agenda today? Now that these major uh, investments uh, have gone, uh, you know what? What? what um, because the the issues are in in a way are all out there um, and there is an, in, an inevitable focus of course and this is something uh, that many of the blockchain and, uh, and, and crypto advocates do not like to talk about but the criminal energy has been phenomenal uh, and the, the research uh, about it is just about to catch up with everything that's happened here you see two uh, books uh, that came out um, came out uh, recently. Uh, the traces in the dark. I can highly re uh, recommend the other one. The missing crypto tree is, is an uh, uh, equally uh, kind of strange, uh, uh, incredible story. Uh, uh, both of them are um, maybe l around five, seven years ago. But here are, of course, two more uh, uh, recent uh, um, books that um, uh, are uh, out there. Um, and there's now a whole uh, new field of investigative journalists, especially in the United States, focusing on them. And uh, Jacob Silverman uh, is uh, definitely uh, one of them. And then there is that very strange book by Michael Lewis. I don't know if anyone of you have yet re read about it, uh, but um, that is the story uh, of Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX. Uh, because Michael Lewis spent a lot of time uh, at FTX when the, comp when the company was still operational. So this has got nothing to do uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the, the big, uh, uh, you know, his, with his arrest and then the, the, the trial, right? The trial, by the way, which ended yesterday, right? And um, here we see, uh, you know, that he was a, a uh, found guilty by the jury last night uh, in, in New York uh, on these uh, seven uh, accounts. Mm? And uh, so th this is kind of the, this, the, the situation. And, um, but uh, yeah, so there will be a lot of uh, kind of books with very, very detailed evidence what exactly uh, uh, happened uh, there. But the Michael Lewis book uh, is, uh, in that sense, interesting uh, that uh, he uh, finished this book uh, just at the moment uh, of the arrest of Bankman Freed, right? So, uh, yeah, so very strange. Uh, but uh, anyway. Uh, so, um, how are we going to, um, uh, and how are you, how are we going to discuss, uh, you know, uh, this, the current uh, situation? Um, um, because um, where, where are we? And, and this is the, the question of, for, especially for Money Lab in a narrow sense, like really not the, the situation out there in the world, 
but really our network and what uh, do you think we should uh, work on uh, in, the, in the coming years. Um, uh, I'm quite uh, uh, open about that. And as I've uh, stated in the, um, in the introduction uh, in the booklet, uh, this would of course include also the dissolvement of the MoneyLab network itself, right? I mean, um, have we done the job? Have we rendered ourselves, uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, really, um, what can I say? Uh, are we still uh, needed? Uh, what is our specific uh, uh, task? Uh, do, are there uh, more urgent uh, uh, issues in the world? Uh, the, the climate collapse, um, uh, Ukraine, uh, Gaza, yeah, there is something like a, a stack of, of crises. There is a, uh, and in, when we look at the, the, the things that have happened in the last two or three years, um, what kind of foundations um, uh, do, we, uh, do we still see for uh, an alternative, uh, a radical, subversive um, agenda uh, for, uh, for money and money in, in general? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it uh, here. This is kind of where uh, maybe I think where, uh, where we are uh, at. And um, I'm very uh, eager to uh, discuss with you all uh, uh, the, um, the, the possible ways uh, we can take the MoneyLab network next. Thank you very much.